So I want <coughs> you to think about fear. And I want you to think about your greatest fear or fears. And we'll come back to this a bit later on, but think about it and hold that in your mind. And then I'm going to ask you uh, this question. Do you think that God is in control? Genuinely and honestly, do you think God is in control? Are you sure? Okay, I can hear one or two yeses there. I hope enough uh, you all have an answer, but you don't have to. Now, you may be sitting in here right now <clears throat> thinking about the situation that you have just come through, come out of, or is waiting for you later today, tomorrow, or the weeks ahead. And that situation makes your blood boil. You don't want to look forward to it at all, or you didn't enjoy going through it. These are real fears that we can't sweep aside, we can't ignore, we can't get rid of easily. But at the same time, you may be sitting here thinking to yourself, nah, there is no such in my life, therefore, this does not apply to me. Well, if that's you, then I don't want to ruin your day, but I want to say maybe you might be a little bit, maybe not quite being truthful, maybe as honest as you could be. Because I am sure there are things in your life that you want to see succeeding. Sometimes they keep you up at night. They keep you on your toes in a day. You know, you, you have to deal with them. You think about them. Sometimes you worry a little bit about them, but they're there. Now, the bottom line is this. The scriptures and the principles we find in the scriptures apply to all of us. Whatever situation that might be, small or big. So, those things that introduce fear in you, whether at home, at work, in your relationships, personal, in work, whatever that might be, in your education, with kids growing up, with me getting old, all those little things that we think about, we can find something in the scriptures that will help us deal with those. So to address these things, I thought we will think about the opposite of fear. Now, English is my third language, so I'm going to ask people who know what that might be. So what is the opposite of fear? One word. Oh. Courage. Hope. Courage. Courage. Anyone else? Faith. Trust. Trust. Faith. Okay. Brave. Brave. Okay. Who, who's a, who, who, did, who got A in English levels? Okay, a few, enough. Yeah. So, fear, opposite. Okay. So, you know what? To make it easier, I'll accept all those answers. Yeah? I'll accept all the above. They do speak to fear, at the opposite of fear. Now, the word I was looking for, now again, remember, third language, so you can't shoot me down like what you want, okay? <laughs> I was looking for what was said earlier over here, courage. Yeah, I was looking for courage, but all the above speak to. So, let's go back to your greatest fear uh, that I asked about earlier. And I just want you to think about that and think about why you worry about the other that might be. Why you have that fear in you that keeps you up at night, worries you all the time. You get up, 
you do your things, but you come back to that one thing. I want you to think about that. So let's go back to our English scholars in the house. So let's define fear. And I'm not going to tell you all that my cheating from the Google. So I'm going to ask you to be up with that, what, what, what that is. So what is fear? And it might be a word or a situation or describing something. So I just want you to, there's no wrongs here, by the way. So you all have passed already with flying colors. So whatever you say, you'll be okay. So what is fear? Uh, feel free to go for it. Something that you're scared of. Something you're scared of. Dread. Dread. Dread, yeah. Terror. It's a, it's a feeling. A feeling. Negative. Negative feeling. Yeah. Anxiety. Anxiety. Yeah. Absence of control. Sorry. Absence, Absence control. of control. Yeah. Matthew, what is fear? <coughs> Get on the spot. <laughs> Spot on. Yes. See, I knew you get it. You had it already. Yes. So, and then I'm going to cheat. I'm going to read what I googled. Okay. An unpleasant emotion or thought that you may have when you are frightened or worried by something dangerous, painful, or bad that is happening or might happen, might happen. Someone mentioned anxiety here. Something that might happen but may not. Fear, dread, fright, alarm, panic, terror, trepidation, mean, painful agitation in the presence or anticipation of danger. Fear is the most general term and implies anxiety and usually loss of courage loss of courage. Now, let's define courage. What is courage again? Brave. Brave. Strength. Strength. Doing what we think we don't have power to do. Yeah? That's deep. Mm -hmm. Going ahead despite the fear. Sorry? Going ahead despite the fear. Going ahead despite the fear. Facing things. Facing things. Head on. Head on. Yeah. So inner, inner strength. Inner strength. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So again, I'll cheat and read what I googled earlier. This is a little moment. The ability to do something that frightens one. It is being. It's about being brave. The ability to control your fear in a dangerous or difficult situation. Doing the right thing. Standing up for what the Bible says about right and wrong. Good or evil. Living honestly with integrity. Avoiding what may get you ahead in life. Not that. Avoiding what might get you ahead in life. But take you down spiritually and morally. Go up, but actually spiritually and morally taking you down. That is courage. But of course, in your own experiences, you might define that differently. But similar kind of, get the idea of what we're looking at. So we're going to look at uh, Deuteronomy 31 verses 1 to 8. Deuteronomy 31 verses 1 to 8. And we're going to read that together. If you're on the Bible, there are lots around on the end. <clears throat> So, for those who are used to high-tech Bibles, this is in the Old Testament. <laughs> Just in case, so you don't have to cheat, come kind of going, ah. What's the verse again there? Uh, 31 verses 1 to 8. Thank you. 
Okay, so I'm going to read that, but I want to focus on the last tweet. So, this is obviously the journal called um, Exodus, the movement of people. And I just want to pick up something in here to share around that. So, then Moses went out and spoke these words to all Israel. I am now 120 years old and I am no longer able to lead you. The Lord has said to me, you shall not cross the Jordan. The Lord your God himself will cross over ahead of you. He will destroy these nations before you and you will take possession of their land. Joshua also will cross over ahead of you as the Lord said. And the Lord will, will do to them what he did to Sihon, or Sion, and Og, the kings of the Amorites, whom he destroyed along with their land. And the Lord will deliver them to you, and you must do to them all that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not be afraid or terrified because of them. For the Lord your God goes with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the presence of all Israel, Be strong and courageous, for you must go with these people into the land that the Lord swore to their ancestors to give them. And you must divide it among them as their inheritance. The Lord himself goes before you and will be with you. He will never leave you nor forsake you. Do not be afraid. Do not be discouraged. So we are in a, well, just past the middle of 2024. We have come on a journey from, if you imagine, the 31st of December, crossing over into January. Think from then to today, what you've gone through, what's happened around you, the exciting things, the good news they've had, the challenging things, the bad news that you've had, things you did not expect to happen are happening. But at the same time, the fact that you're here and alive is something to be joyful about, to rejoice about. We're not here by accident, but we listened to the opportunity that was presented to us and we took it. It didn't happen by chance or accident at all. So the question that I have is, going back to your fear, what is stopping you from pressing forward, from moving forward, when you come this far? What is getting in your way and preventing you from being what you're supposed to be, what God wants you to be? From hearing God and stepping out in faith to go, what is preventing you from doing that? Courage is about trusting and acting. But we first have to know who God is, establish a relationship with him, and then listen and then act. Now, a relationship is a two-way thing. You guys have more experience and knowledge with that than probably me. But it takes two. He's doing his part. The question is, are you doing your part? Courage is one of those areas that you are not so good, you struggle with. Then the question is, do you trust him or not? Think of the reading we just read, Deuteronomy. Imagine you're a Joshua. You've just been asked to lead a people. What would you do? How would you feel? How would you feel? Is it that easy? Is it hard? If it is hard, is it impossible? Or is it possible? 
let's go back to our fears in our lives, in our minds, in our heads. And is it possible to overcome that? Now, overcoming something does not mean it isn't present. It's how do we deal with it? How do we handle it? How do we press forward knowing that there are dangers around us all the time? Where do we put our trust? In our fellow brothers or sisters or in God? So I just wanted to, at this point, pause. And I think it's right and proper. I think we have time, have a bit of time, to take five minutes and have a little discussion, maybe. And I have a few questions for you that I wanted to just discuss amongst yourselves. If you want breaking even smaller groups, that's fine. You can be like in twos and threes, that's okay. And if you're in a relationship, partners, maybe you want to split up, uh, that might be useful as well. So, so maybe Tim will go there, and maybe uh, you can go there and, and whatever. So, so just a few of you. And, 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 and these are the questions I have for you. What does courage what does being courageous look like to you? That's the first one. What does being courageous look like to you? So from your own personal experience, you might be able to share that. And then what has God recently asked you to do? And what was your response? What has God recently asked you to do? And what was your response? Let me pause them and I'll ask the other two later. So first one, what does being courageous look like to you? Using your own personal experiences, okay? And then the next one, what has God recently asked you to do and what was your response, okay? says you have plenty of courage I am sure answered odds all you need is confidence in yourself there is no living thing that is not afraid when it faces danger true courage is in facing danger when you are afraid and that kind of courage you have in plenty you all have it but that step is so difficult to take. That step to face it is so difficult to take. Um, so to wind up, just to help us, um, there are a number of things that I think are helpful. And again, you guys are way, way knowledgeable than I am. But I thought I'd share what I put the piece together anyway. The first thing is this. We need to develop a deep and intimate relationship with God. Each one of us has to do that. And this is not about pretending. This is about you, when you're on your own, reflecting on your own life and being able to genuinely and honestly say to yourself, yes, I am working on this. I am working with God on this. It's very, very easy for us as believers, people of faith, very easy to be under the umbrella, right? I am a Christian, so what? I go to church, so what? I sing, so what? Do you have a relationship with God? Again, as I said earlier, it's a two-way thing. Relationships are two-way thing, not one way. So we need to develop a deep and intimate relationship with God through prayer. What does your prayer life look like? Again, that's an honest examination of where you are between you and God doesn't matter what I think you might be the most amazing praying person in the world but you're just speaking the words where are you at in here only you and God know that so look at that and talk to him about that worship 
What does worship look like? Same in part of that, but your day to day living is all worship as well. Everything that you do. What does that look like? Studying the scriptures, devotions, daily devotions, or whatever that might be. Now, I want to just pick up on that a little bit. I remember when I was a bit younger, the whole thing of reading and memorizing Bible verses was a big thing. And I want to pick that up and say, do that as much as you can. But, but memorizing the Bible does not give you what we're looking for. Knowledge, being able to quote, recite, doesn't, it helps, but it does not get us where we need to get to. But what does, what makes us courageous is the meditation on that that you're reading. It's consuming it and feeding off it and let, letting it help you grow, develop. That is the key, the meditation piece, not the memorizing piece, the meditation. Are you really getting into the message, the scriptures, and really dwelling on them? I don't care if you take how many years to read a verse in the Bible. Do it over and over, but let it bed in. That is so important. Meditation. And then as we do that, we start drawing strength and courage from him because we're surrounding ourselves by him, being in his presence, relying on him. What's the other word you normally say? Relying and trusting, trusting and clinging, to. clinging to. Yeah? That we need to be doing that. Deuteronomy 31 6 reminds us to be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is the Lord your God who goes with you. Earlier on I said, do we really know him? If we do, then we will trust him. Don't rely on your own plan to be courageous because God has his own master plan. Yeah? Not your plan, not my plan. His one is better. He created all of this anyway, so why not just trust him and rely on his plan? Now, again, think of Joshua. Think of this, you know, really? You want us to go around marching around this thing? We're in a war here. How on earth can we defeat the enemy if all we're doing is going around the walls? What kind of plan is that? For you and I, it doesn't make sense, does it? We want to go with all the various whatever we can get the best and mighty military artillery stuff, whatever we want to use. I go around with the forks and sticks and whatever and make noise. But he has a plan and that plan worked. Think of the fear in your life. Don't come up with an amazing plan of this is how I deal with this. Or if you do, ask him first because he already has a plan work with that plan, learn to trust him. But to do that, we need to spend more time in a relationship with him. One does not work without the other. So rely on his plan. It worked for these guys, and then your plan is unique. He has it for you, and it, it will work for you. Do not submit to failure, because God's plan is in place to succeed and trust that it will work. Why? Because God is in control. So I hope that what we've talked about this morning, there's something in there that you can take with you. And whatever situation you're facing, I pray that you will keep on relying on God clinging on him, not letting go. And if you can't do that, let's go back to the earliest 
step of I need to know who he is. Because the more you get to know who he is, the more excitement you're going to have and you just want to be in his presence. You know, those relationships, the early days of your relationships, you know, Pete, Angie, you know, you can't you can, you can keep away from the guy, you know, all that kind of stuff, remember? You know, those days, maybe, maybe they weren't. But I hope there was something like that. Don't let go of that. In this context, let's hold on to him closely. And I pray that courage will come through and you'll keep on marching forward with the confidence, knowing that he is there with you. Be courageous, don't be afraid. <coughs> Heavenly Father, we thank you so much this day for what you mean, what you do, for being there with us, being our strength when we're struggling, bringing joy, peace, healing, the many things that we look for, Lord. But I pray this morning that we will step out in faith and play our part in this relationship that we have with you. Because if we can focus on that, then it will help us navigate the rather difficult journey that we are on, the situation that we're facing personally in our own lives, Lord. And I pray that we'll be strong enough to be courageous and move forward knowing that whatever situation we face, there is an answer and that answer comes from you. I pray that as we go home, you will go with us and help us to be a blessing to those we come in contact with daily, Lord. Mm -hmm. And I thank you for these guys who have been here and our children also for just being present and for whatever they've been participating in this morning. Help them to grow up with your knowledge, Lord, wanting that personal relationship with you. We ask all this in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Amen.